why is important that uh, you verify what type of generator is from the beginning? Why is necessary identify that? Because some people say, ah, for me, it doesn't matter. Mr. Lopez said that some manufacturer produce uh, alternator type, other one uh, uh, armature type, or, or vice versa. This is not critical. But uh, if you are a technician dedicated to the service, uh, yes, it is important for you. In what is the symptom when I need to think what type of alternator is? What is the symptom when the customer calls to me? Low voltage. Low I have voltage. low voltage. Low voltage. Low voltage. Ah, okay. I have low voltage. I need to think. This is the generator that I am going to visit today in the afternoon. Let me check in the manual if it's alternator type or armature type. In both in both cases, I go with one bridge of diodes in my pocket. Mm -hmm. No. And uh, if it's alternator type, I need verify if those brushes. I need to remove that one with the screwdriver and verify if the brushes are where. I replace that. That's. Simple. And with a sandpaper, I clean the slip rings. I move the crunch up and I clean. I put it back the, the brushes and finish. All right? What is the symptom in the other type of alternator, armature type, for, uh, excuse me, for uh, the bridge of diodes damage? When the bridge of diodes is broken or damaged, what is the symptom? You remember I explained what is the function of the bridge of diodes? Convert, a, DC Convert the small AC produces for the engine at the beginning into DC, and with that DC, create the magnets, the electromagnets. Yeah. Uh, in that case, what is the symptom? The generator start, is running, but not produce power. And this is very common in what situations? Mm. Correct, because the generator was oh, for up long for a long time. Long time. Oh, yeah. oh, I used my boat a year ago, and yesterday, the generator starts, ta, 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 but no produce power. You remember that uh, I explained that uh, you have um, in the bridge of diodes one diagonal for AC and the other diagonal for DC, yeah. no? Okay, you remove the terminal. Well, how you know which diagonal is DC? Because they have the, the labels positive and negative. Uh, and the other one, they have the labels, AC. the symbol AC. AC with the, with the symbol of uh, the signal. Okay, I remove the diagonal DC. And in that point, I connect what? In those both terminals of the diagonal DC, I connect with a couple of alligator cables, one battery, the battery that I have in my drill. And I connect temporary. I start the generator. When the generator is running, I, I connect for a couple of seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, and remove that, and the generator start to produce, and you put them back the terminals. And the generator continue producing power. Short you start the generator. Pay attention. Positive and negative, no? In the diagonal of uh, the DC. And this one to the battery. You start the generator, 10 seconds. You disconnect this, and you put it back the, the original cable. Finito. And now the generator is producing your own power, and the generator continue producing power. This is self-excitation. What is the symptom when I need to do self-excitation? The generator no produce power, yeah? It's normal. It's normal that the customer complains, oh, my generator uh, is producing power, but that uh, one phase is a little lower with respect to the other one. This is normal. Normal complaint, no? Other one is, oh, my generator is producing power, but both phases are too low. Uh, my generator is producing power, but uh, both phases are a little high. That's, that's common. But uh, nothing in both of them is not common. Nothing is probably the breaker is that is <laughs> Papi, the breaker is oh Mr. Lopez, sorry the breaker. Oh, okay, do not the breaker. All right. But uh, in general it's not common, it's no excitation. Right? All right. Important. Don't, don't forget that. That's that's very important. For that reason, my friend, you you know in a, in generator you need to be organized with a lot of uh, alligator cables, <laughs> different different type of clips, because in some cases you need a small clips because you have it you don't have a space in other cases, or bigger ones. That you need to organize a lot of different roles of uh, uh, extension wires. OK, guys? Very, 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 very important. Other important thing before we continue with the symptoms and the damage is uh, the wiring of the generator with respect to the AC panel. Remember that we have three sources of AC power, the generator, 
the inverter and the short power. Both of them enter in what point, guys? Enter here. What is this? The AC switch selector, inverter, short power, and generator, you see? Or, if you don't have this, you have what? Three breakers. This is the AC switch selector, yeah? Look, from the main breaker on the generator, I wire into the AC switch selector. And from the AC switch selector, I enter in the AC panel, main AC panel. What type of breakers I found that here? Lights, air condition, water heater, refrigerator, stop, ba 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 ba. All of those. Later we are going to, to talk about one breaker that create confusion. Some AC panels they have one breaker here with the label inverter slash charger. The breaker to activate the inverter is here. Look at this. In the majority of the boats, you have one breaker here with the label inverter slash charger. What is the meaning of that? It's because in the inverter, internally, one portion of the inverter is a small battery charger. That battery charger is dedicated to charge the group of batteries of the inverter. And that in battery charger receives power from here, from there, when the inverter is not producing power. Later, we are going to talk about that. But this is not the breaker to activate the uh, inverter. inverter. This is an ABYC question. My friend, other important thing is you need good, and uh, if it's possible, the clamp, the clamp meter. We did the wiring of the AC panel, you remember, and we installed and meters and volt meters, no? All right. The wiring from this point through this point and from this point to this point. For that reason, it's important that uh, when you when you check the consideration where I am going to locate my generator, you need to think where I am going to pass the harness to activate remotely the, the generator. No, the start, stop, remote panel for the generator. That's different. That, that, that harness is only DC cables. DC cable, DC cable, DC cables connected here. You see? This is the generator. This is the main breaker of the generator. This is the preheat, start, and the fuse, you know? And this is the outlet to connect the remote panel. The remote panel. This is not this is not the plug to connect the AC cable. No. The AC cable, this is the breaker, I connect. This is the AC cable, and this AC cable is coming to to AC selection the AC position of this of this uh, selector. It's clear, guys? Yeah. You have one plug here for the harness. The harness for start, stop, preheat, and the gauge. This, the harness for this remote control panel. The harness for this remote control panel. You see? Shoot down, start, run, stop, you see? And oil pressure, temperature, turn, turn all the gauge, remote panel. Where is this located? Any part. It's different because this one have a cable connected here. Okay, you need to take consideration is where, where I am going to pass those DC cables, where I am going to pass the AC cable, that one, in some cases, you only have a space for one side. I recommend put a plastic cover for those cables and plastic cover for this, and after that, both of them together. Both of them separated with the, the plastic shield, yeah? And you create a bundle with both of them. In general, my recommendation is AC, AC cables and DC cables not together. In separate bundles, probably together, but separated to avoid interference. Okay, now my AC panel is activated. I have power in the AC panel coming from the generator. The gauge of the wire, depend of what? Depend of the distance, the amps of the breaker, and uh, the temperature. That, that cable is running the majority of the time inside of the engine room. Oh, I need to consider the temperature of the engine room. You remember the table in the ABYC uh, study guide? Okay, with that table, 
the temperature, the length, and the amps, you can collate the gauge of the wire. Never, never try to use a smaller gauge. Always the gauge recommended in the table or a little bigger, but no less. If not to produce too much voltage, drop. Voltage, drop. Clear, my friends? In the breaker, in the main breaker, what cable you have? Hot and neutral. What about the ground? The ground is from the body of the generator. You know? Neutral and ground are together only only at the source of the power. Let me show to you what is the meaning of that in that specific example. Guys, hot, hot and neutral, you see? And look at this, what is this? It's ground connected Ground, to ground and neutral are together here. Ah, this is the neutral entering in the? Breaker. In the breaker, going into the panel. And from any part of the housing, I send a new ground. The only part where neutral and ground are together is here at the source of the power. What is the name of this small board? The AC PC board. My friends, if you see, according with the position of this with this or this with this, you can configure your boat, your generator to produce two phases, one phase, two phases European, one phase American, two phases, according with the configuration here. Don't forget that because now I am going to explain the process to calibrate frequency and we are going to refresh again about this, okay?